Los Angeles Dodgers uh, are in the driver's seat, and they're on the one-yard line, and they're in the ninth inning. And every adjective and every narrative you can use, folks, they're up 3-0 in the series, in the World Series, and no one has ever come back to win a World Series down 0-3. They win in the Bronx last night by a final of 4-2. to two. Freddie Freeman right now is on track to win the World Series MVP, regardless if this thing goes uh, five games or six games. But the Dodgers have gotten great pitching. Uh, great defense, as you see there, uh, timely hitting as well, and Freeman's really led the way with some really big hits. Five straight consecutive World Series games with a home run. This despite Shohei Otani being hurt, still played in that game yesterday. Uh, offense has struggled for the Yankees at times this season, and unfortunately it struggled again in uh, in the World Series as well. And as of right now, Aaron Boone knows this team is up against it. Aaron, only one team has ever come back from a 3 nothing deficit in World Series history. How do you like your chances heading into Game 4? Um, we'll tr we're trying to get a game tomorrow. Okay? That's that's where our focus lies. So hopefully we can, you know, go be this amazing story and shock the world. But right now it's about trying to get a lead, trying to grab a game, and, and force force another one, and then and then on from there. But we got to grab one first. Really good answer from the manager of the Yankees, uh, Aaron Boone. But let's just keep it real for a moment. Uh, Dodgers need to win one game, one game out of the next four to win the World Series. So they're just going to throw uh, a bullpen game today, knowing that they got full, all systems go starting in game five if they need it. That's why the Yankees are favored tonight over on the FanDuel Sportsbook. They're minus 148 because the Yankees uh, have Luis Heel pitching, and he'll be better and go deeper into the game than anybody on the Dodgers. And, uh, you know, some people may be surprised with that line to see the Yankees as big a favorite. But generally speaking, when the team is up 3-0 in the World Series, they want to put their uh, foot on the throat, so to speak. But the Dodgers don't really need to do that. They have a lot of good pitchers that can pitch in game five, six, and seven, as we know. All right, now over to Monday Night Football we go. And a slog in the first half turned out to be an actually very exciting game in the second half between the Giants and Steelers. The Steelers end up winning this game, covering the spread. And also goes uh, over the total, which is a surprise I know to most on Monday Night Football. Total of, as you see there, 26, uh, was it, Luke? To 18, that was the final score there. And uh, goes over the total in this one. A solid game for Russell Wilson. The Steelers just keep on winning. And uh, they've been doing it in the air. They've been doing it on the ground and throwing some really nice passes late in the game. And, of course, uh, scoring on special teams is what the Steelers do best. Uh, naturally, after the game, Mike Tomlin uh, talked about not really wanting style points to win games against against a team like the Giants, but simply wanting to win. Man, really appreciative of our efforts. Um, it wasn't as fluid as we'd like, man, but that's football. We got to guard against style points and things of that nature, man. Um, it was primetime uh, television and football against a team uh, that came in here with a good mindset. Um, we shot ourselves in the foot some early, man, settling for three. Uh, we gave up a couple big plays that allowed them to generate uh, some scoring drives. They kicked three. Um, but I just like the overall look of the group at halftime. Uh, we acknowledged where we were. We, we acknowledged we needed some plays, man, to break this thing open. And I had a bunch of guys that, that wanted to be the reason why we were successful. Um, can't say enough about Calvin, man. I just thought, you know, that's a big play. Um, that punt return, man, was a catalyst for us. Um, Again, as I mentioned, we just got a lot of guys that want to be the reasons why. Um, T.J. Watt, um, Alex Highsmith, man, I thought really provided really consistent pressure, um, particularly in the second half. Um, we're, we're just thankful to be 6-2 and two, um, at the turn. Um, we need this downtime, man, to get, get some guys healthy. We had some bumps and bruises associated with play, but I think that everyone that went down in game was able to return. I'll pause and open it up for questions. Well, my only question is, how far can the Pittsburgh Steelers go? I guess the question for the New York Giants is, what do they do at quarterback? Uh, I mean, another tough game for the Giants. They were actually in this game late, but Daniel Jones was strip-sacked by T.J. Watt. Guess who? Talked about him yesterday. With three minutes left, leading to a turnover, uh, Brian Dable may have to make a big decision going into next week's game, but as of now, he at least talked about what happened last night. Are you saying on the chip play, are you saying Daniel didn't make the right check, or are you saying it didn't get it, it was No, it wasn't a check. Uh, he was going, you know, pressure situation was a clock. We had a shift with the tight end to get back over to Watt, and we didn't get the shift. 
So we talked about it uh, in a, we talked about it in the locker room. Um, you know, it's you know DJ feels terrible. To be honest with you, uh, and I know he's going to own it. He came up here to say he owned it. Um, there was a shift that was accompanying the play. He was kind of seeing, surveying the, the the coverage, deciding what he wanted to do, and we didn't get the shift. Um, so, and they were lining up with him in different. You know, sometimes they were lining up with him on the left a little bit more than they have. So we were we we're making sure that if we put a chipper there, uh, that he didn't line up opposite. So we were shifting to try to get uh, to try to get the help where we needed to get the help. Um, so. Another lost season in progress for the New York Giants. Meanwhile, the Kansas City Chiefs keep on making trades. The deadline is next week. They acquire a pass rusher for the New England Patriots who appear to be open for business. Josh Uche goes over for a 2026 sixth round pick. He did not play in their win over the Jets. The Chicago Bears have to be seething after watching their teammate Tyreek Stevenson Taunting the fans at the end of that Hail Mary, Stevenson apologized to the team for lack of awareness and said to Chicago and my teammates, my apologies for my lack of awareness and focus. This game ain't over until zeros hit the clock. He'll learn his lesson there. Meanwhile, have the Indianapolis Colts learned a lesson at quarterback? Kind of hard to say. Shane Steichen, non-committal this week as to who will start at quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts. Anthony Richardson is the starter. He's not played well this season. Joe Flacco is the backup, and he led the Browns late last season to the playoffs. So we'll see if a change is made there. The Packers, as of now, are not looking to make a change at quarterback. But if Jordan Love can't play this week with a strained groin, then Malik Willis could. But they're saying that he has a chance to play. Colorado's Travis Hunter becomes the first player ever to win the Big 12 Offensive and Defensive Player of the Week Award in the same season, in the same week. In the Buffalo's Week 9 over win over Cincinnati, he set a single-game career for pass breakups with four, and he had 153 receiving yards in the game. Penn State's quarterback Drew Aller will be a game-time decision against Ohio State. We'll see if he plays this week. Ben Stevens will be along in just a few minutes with a preview there. The University of Central Florida has seen enough of their defense. They fired their defensive coordinator, Ted Roof, just eight games into the season they're one and four in the big 12 and there is a game in college football tonight florida atlantic university otherwise known as fiu a 25 minute drive for me nine point favorites on the road tonight taking on new mexico state in the nba last night darius garland had 34 points for the cleveland cavaliers in their victory against the new york knicks guess who is hot it is the Cavs, four and oh undefeated at the start of the season. The Boston Celtics, they beat the Bucks down 119 to 108. Jalen Brown with 30 points in the win. Damian Lillard, Giannis both had 30 points in the loss. Boston covered that one. The Phoenix Suns played yet another close game last night. This time they beat the Lakers 109 to 105. Kevin Booker had 33. Durant had 30 points. Sacramento beat Portland 111 to 98. First win for the Kings. De'Aaron Fox had 24 points. Big news in hockey, potentially a big Injury to one of the best players in the National Hockey League, Connor McDavid, left the game with a lower body injury yesterday. Also, the U.S. women's national team, Emma Hayes, won Women's Coach of the Year. And the Connecticut Sun and Stephanie White have parted ways after two seasons. We'll be right back.